of you. Um, we have uh, all met uh, four in, three months ago in April, and now it's three months later. We are kind of no more in the, in the height of COVID, except for Tracy, I think Tracy still is. The rest of us um, have moved on to post-COVID. And so today we're going to look at what is this new normal um, that's coming up. Uh, what really does it mean for us as business leaders? Uh, what really does it mean for the people that we lead as well as for organizations? Okay, so first of all, I'd like to get uh, my wonderful panelists uh, to do a little bit of introductions for themselves. Um, so who would like to start first? I think Tracy are the only lady, so ladies first. So Tracy, <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, Tracy, you're on mute. <laughs> I heard that is the code of 2020. You're on mute. Yeah. <laughs> yes, go on. Um, yeah, so um, I've been uh, at home, working at home since uh, March, and um, California briefly reopened um, for a bit, and then um, we've started shut down stuff again because of the rise in cases. So my company is a sports tech company. It's a small company. We've been um, working remotely since March, and um, you know, we've all found ways to, to adapt to to working together remotely, being <clears throat> on remote meetings and you know, making sure that all the functions that we normally used to do in the office are possible to be carried out um, remotely via logging into computers and, and um, you know, only having a few essential personnel on site who are needed to, to actually physically hook up cables or to do some of the, the, the infrastructure work. But uh, the rest of us are all at home and you know, we've been finding ways to, to connect socially as well as um, for work purposes. And you know, so far, I think everybody has adapted pretty well. And my kids you know, were on uh, distance learning and it's been summer break, but when we um, get to the fall, they will all be uh, doing distance learning again. So I think we're just waiting to see you know, if, if that will help to, to keep, um, keep the cases um, under control in California. Thank you very much. Um, and so Tracy is the uh, vice, I think a vice president, right, of R&D for Second Spectrum. Those of you who ever watched like NBA or who watch uh, Premier League Soccer and you guys see the tracking technology, that's those, they are the guys who provide it. So, you know, if they made a wrong call, you know, on the uh, scoring, you know now who to complain to, right? Because <laughs> you guys are also <laughs> track the company, players, but right? yeah. <laughs> Your company is all track the players, yes. Okay, thank you very much, Tracy. And then, um, who would like to go next? Um, John, would you like to go? Uh, so I'm at home today because I came back last night from Beijing. So for my work, I do a lot of travel, which has been nice. In the last three months, we've gotten around most places in the country. Um, but we have kind of a, like a, a hot spot watch list, right? So we were able to get to Beijing. Uh, I came back today and this morning rolled out of bed and went and got my, my COVID test so I can go to work tomorrow. Um, the test should be, I may actually be back by now. I can check my app later and see what my results are. Uh, but it just seems like the, the nicer thing to do with my colleagues, even though I'm pretty sure uh, everything is fine, just to make sure that when we come back from a place that recently had a flare up, uh, that we do a test. Uh, and I feel lucky that in a city of, you know, nearly 20 million people in Beijing, when we say there's a flare up, it's like less than 100 people, but everybody's still very much on guard um, for what that means. And here in Shenzhen, we're also a little bit, a little bit cautious. We've had a few cases come in from Hong Kong, or actually one, one confirmed case after all of the, uh, the craziness in Hong Kong. Uh, so now we're a little bit cautious about what that means here in Shenzhen. Um, so we're very much responsive to population density. And since most cities have over 8 million people, we sort of <laughs> hold our breaths and, and hope that the tracking takes hold. Thank you very much. Um, and I think um, you are no more the city with the most cases outside of, uh, outside of Wuhan, right? I mean, that has- At one point in time, back. yeah, yeah. Other cities have, have come along and sort of stole that crown. Um, so <laughs> right. in the early parts of February, we, we, we held that distinction. Uh, but really, I think we've had nearly 100 days. So today, if this, is, if this case pans out, it would be the first case we've had in, in more than 100 days. So we've gone I think when we last met, I was already back in the office because we're like, yeah, things are kind of normal. Uh, so we, we were pretty stable for, for a very long time. And then this recent uh, case in Hong Kong has sort of caught our attention. 
All right. So I, I don't know whether you mentioned it that you were in Shenzhen, but um, he's in Shenzhen, China, just mm. across the border mm. from Hong Kong. You know, so like mm. they are the first city that you move into when you cross over mm -hmm. to Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Thank you very much, John. Mm -hmm. um, we are happy that Miang has joined us. Miang, hi, hello. Miang, you're a little bit, um, the camera's a little bit high, so we only see half of your face. Uh, so maybe we could get Javier to introduce yourself first, let Miang kind of settle down. Javier, would yeah, you like to introduce course. yourself? Yeah, of course. Hi, everybody. Well, it's a pleasure to be with, with all of you. <laughs> Working from home, as, as I think the majority, and what I realized that uh, this three months uh, flies. It's, it's incredible. Just, uh, just a few months ago, we were chatting, and we are almost in, in August. And this is very surprising, you know? And well, I, I work as a lecturer, and as a lecturer, you have the possibility to, to work remotely, no? And this is a, a, something that it's, it's, it's helpful for me. But at the same time, I work also as a consultant. And what I notice is that the, the, the activity of the companies decrease a lot because there are certainly uncertainty that people don't know exactly what to do, especially because I train companies, and many companies decided to stop all the programs to train people, so they are thinking, okay, what's going to happen? I have a lot of training courses, for instance, in September, on October, physically. I have to go to the companies and to give training face-to-face. Uh, -face. But I have the sensation, and many of, of us, we have the sensation that maybe these this, uh, trainings will cancel because we are having some outbreaks here in Spain again, in some parts of some countries, in some cities. So we don't know what's going to happen. Um, my my theory is that maybe we are we are going to cancel these training courses because the outbreaks is, are returning again. So this is a, an illness very difficult to control, and I think the future is uh, remotely remote control. I think this is my my idea. No, and mm -hmm. from the part from the university, the university also decided okay, we are going to prepare the classes as if people the students come back to the normal classes, but at the same time we have the plan B. Plan B is okay. If we can go to the classes, we have classes online as before. So this is more or less the situation right now here in Spain. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Um, and I think we've lost Mia again. So <laughs> Lee, would you like to introduce Lee is a tech lead from Aviva. So <laughs> Lee, would you like to introduce yourself first? Sure. Hello, everyone. Lee here again. So um, still in <laughs> Singapore. New job now. So uh, I've gone from HR manager to tech and transformation leader or oh, lead in that time. <laughs> um, it's been an interesting few months. Um, you know, like um, Singapore, we never had lockdown. Don't use the word lockdown. We had circuit breaker, right? Um, but it's been, um, it's been interesting. I, I, honestly, not much has changed. I think we've all been working from home um, for then. What's really been in, interesting for me, I think, over the past period, has been watching the difference in play out between the UK, you know, where I'm obviously from and where I've got family from and, and Singapore. And just seeing the dramatic differences there um, b b between the two approaches. Uh, but I imagine we'll talk about that in a little bit, so I won't say too much yet. But um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hello, everyone. Lee here. Hi, hello. Uh, Miang, are you, are you ready to introduce yourself, Miang? Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can hear you, but we can't see you. Oh. Well, we can see you, but it's just a picture. <laughs> yes, we can oh. hear you. Oh, can you hear me? I, I'm sorry. I don't know what the problem is, but okay. um, uh, hello, everyone. Hi. Would I'm you like to introduce yourself? Oh, my, me. Uh, I live in Korea, and I just joined uh, the Siren View three months ago, and I'm very happy to see you all. I was, uh, I was uh, sick actually last week and I was really worried because uh, maybe it was COVID-19 so <laughs> so I had a test but uh, thanks God luckily it was just a simple cold. At the moment the weather in Korea is crazy. It's July, it's the end of July. It is supposed to be very hot and humid. Humid is humid but it's like a autumn so the environment the weather uh, i'm quite worried and not just covid 19 virus so um miyang is the contributing editor for forbes um she is also the chief content officer of php and her own author so she wrote um you wrote 
oh my goodness, I can't remember your title offhand, but you wrote something about the um, confusing or the craziness of English, which I agree with, yes, by the way. Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I wrote uh, the, the crazy situation of English education in Korea. In yes. Korea, everyone wants to speak good English. Everyone wants to learn something about English, but uh, Korean and English, it's a very different language. So I wrote about, yes, I wrote about uh, a book. I wrote a book about English. Sorry, I'm not feeling very well. <laughs> no, no Sorry. problem. I mean, thank you so much for joining us because she's actually she's a bit under the weather, but uh, officially not COVID-19 positive, which is great. So just to kick today's off, um, started off, um, I just kind of want to hear from you guys. Uh, what do you think this new normal is going to be like? I mean, in, where you are from, but also generally, you know, across work, across business? Because I think you are all from different industries and you all come from different backgrounds. So what do you think the new normal will be like looking forward? So who would like to start? Um, John, would you like to start? I think you are furthest along the new normal from the rest of us. So maybe you can give us a, a preview. Hmm. I think from, from a work perspective, just what will normal work be like? I think, um, most people are back and it's very, you know, inside of, everybody still goes through. We do temperature checks at buildings. Everybody wears masks in, in the indoor spaces. Uh, but then you go upstairs and then you can sort of see where once people are in the offices, the masks come off and uh, people are a lot more relaxed. Um, but we're also very much aware of anything that could be sort of a follow-up breakout. So th that's what I was mentioning before. I think anytime there, there's anything, we're sort of tracking it and seeing where it, where it goes. And I expect that's part of normal for people as well. Uh, at least until the next stage of normal, if there's a vaccine, I think more people are just going to be, or we'll be like Nyang, we'll be like, I have a cold, I need to get tested. Uh, I had a, a stuffy nose last week and I was like, oh, can I still smell everything, right? I mean, we get uh, very nervous about those little things that happen. Um, but I think overall, we're, we're finding that more people have gone back. A lot more companies are are still on uh, like so things that are, are related to uh, that flexibility for, for going through um, the pandemic. So we'll have people that now can come in sort of at 10 o'clock or go a little bit early so they can avoid peak times on metros, which means everybody's peak time on the metro is just like an hour or two later than before. I don't know if it really works, uh, but there's more opportunities for people to be flexible in their approach. Uh, so I think there's uh, there's been a, quite a few changes on the way people at least approach flexibility. Um, there are some companies, so I'm also in the consulting industry, and so there's some companies, um, one of the clients that we work is still going to stay um, homework through the rest of the year. Um, so there's a few companies that have sort of made that option. If you don't have to be in the office, you don't go to the office basically. Um, but those are, those are probably the exception rather than the rule. Um, I think most people, if there's any sort of like, you know, scare, people are a lot more flexible. So like I said, I came back from a business trip. I'll take today to work from home while I wait for my COVID test to come back. Uh, and that's, I think, just part of the new normal of uh, courtesy as well, right? If you've been traveling to some place in, in our industry, in the, the consulting industry, it's quite normal for us to be like, oh, I got our COVID test yesterday, everything's fine. Uh, because everywhere we go, you know, on our phone, we have, uh, we scan a QR code that says where you've been, what your general health is. Um, and in general, in China, we're very okay with, you know, the fact that we know our phone tracks us. So we're just, we're not worried about our, our privacy because we know that aspect of privacy is already gone. So. Um, we just sort of use that as a way to make sure everybody knows that we're, we're healthy and safe and taking care of each other. Um, so I think that's to us is, is when we see the outside world and there's these this, you know, discussions of privacy and are we being tracked and things. We say, it's already happened here. It's fine. It's the easiest way to make sure everybody's safe. right? And so that's the upside is that, um, for example, we have this one potential case that has everybody scared. And uh, within a day, they tested, I think, 2,700 people in this guy's apartment building complex and neighborhood. Um, and then they basically got zero positive tests coming back from that. So, I mean, the fact that we can know where people have been and, and that tracking is that fast and efficient, I think also gives people a bit of peace of mind. Well, there's that nervousness. There's also, I think, a general belief that there's a good system in place to help keep it controlled. Um, and that's a nice part of um, of the new normal as well, that, that while we know that there's risk, we also know that there's good systems, um, which I don't think is universal around the world, but at least here is, is quite normal. Um, but do you see that um, work is any different? I mean, or work is just like you know, business as usual? Well, uh, small, medium businesses are, a lot of us took a shellacking. It was not a good, uh, a good first six months of the year. 
Um, so even if you go, I was surprised, I was walking through some of the neighborhoods for restaurants and dining in Shanghai the other day, and just the number of places that are closed um, really kind of took me off guard and surprised me. So I think we're finding a lot of places that are, that you don't see when you're kind of isolated, but when you actually start getting out, you suddenly start realizing that, you know, certain things have closed down and that they're not as prevalent as they used to be. Uh, so not everybody, for example, in FNB apparently made the transition to delivering straight to people's homes. Right? Uh, and some small businesses that thrive on face-to-face -face. and similar to Javier, uh, if you're in the training industry, we're constantly being aware that training gets pushed back right? or consultation projects are going to give you rescheduled. Um, anything where budget is controlled overseas and not in China is a big question mark. Uh, just because we're affected by global policies for, for things like that. If your client is a multinational who spends money that's approved overseas, you know, that's, that, that may or may not happen because budgets are frozen in another place they're affecting here. Uh, and that tends to be what we saw, this happened with the, with the global meltdown in 2008. That tends to be a period of time where Chinese companies will sort of rise up and fill in that gap as well. Uh, so we'll probably see more sort of rising and expanding Chinese brands here in China as a result of that, the sort of the the multinationals lose that ability to compete um, by spending to grow uh, during this period of time. So it'd be kind of interesting to see what will happen at the end of the year, what sort of new brands will be there, uh, what's going to be the case for some of the small medium businesses that, uh, that are here in the market. But that's definitely taken an impact. Um, some people made a good transition to digital um, and they grabbed a hold of that because, you know, being able to do anything online for shopping or services in China um, is well, we're used to it. We're hooked into our phones. We live with our phones, our babies, right? And if, uh, <laughs> if we can go digital, then, it, then it's worked. But if it hasn't been digital for some people, then companies are struggling in a lot of ways. But that's going to be through the year. You know, there's not, uh, not always a good safety net for small, medium businesses. Thank you very much, John. Thank you. Um, I think another society probably that is, you know, a bit further along is Korea. You guys have been open for like two, three months now. Um, how are things in Korea? I mean, what is this new normal looking like uh, for you and for businesses in general? Mia? Yeah? Uh, um, everything looks normal. I mean, um, what, what I mean normal is uh, I work, I enjoy. I mean, life just goes on. Life just goes on. But the thing is that... Um, as uh, John just uh, said, small businesses are really struggling. Big companies are okay because they have a system. But small companies, people now consume everything online. So face-to-face -face restaurants, I mean, delivery restaurants, okay. Delivery food business is okay. But face-to-face -face restaurants, especially small ones, they are really struggling and uh, I write books, but all my contents are provided online. So I don't, I don't provide my books offline bookstores. So I feel relatively okay. But writers who write books, paper books, they suffer a lot. And uh, yeah, I mean, I feel relatively okay, but when I go out and see lots of stores closed and uh, lots of people depressed, crying, some people so trying there are people to... people depressed and crying on the street in Korea? Uh, no, no, no. no. When, Alarming when, news. When I talk to the owners of a restaurant, I mean, I mean, not, not, no, 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 adults don't cry in the street, no, okay. but once you, right. you, you begin, once you begin talking to any owners of a restaurant, they start to say, life is so hard. Okay. Oh, yeah, so. Um, no, I, I'm sorry, but I guess in Korea, always strike me as, they, they, I guess they strike me as having kind of a, a stiff upper lip uh, kind of culture. So I'm quite shocked that, you know, you talk to an owner of a restaurant and they start crying. That's like, that's seriously alarming. But I mean, is it, are things that bad? The economy is not good. Yeah, I think so. But uh, I mean, what I mean is that life just goes on. Numbers are okay. Report, numbers on the reports from the government or of the financial institutions. But mm -hmm. what I mean is that small businesses are really, really hard. 
and uh, wh whoever you just to talk the owners of a small restaurant a small bookshop small what whatever they yeah I mean I try to interview some of the owners or some of the business small businesses people they all they all <laughs> yes they always they, cry yeah. <laughs> okay but I mean I can understand that yeah so I guess it's similar to what is happening in China. I mean, larger businesses mm -hmm. are doing okay. Smaller businesses are kind of struggling. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, how about the rest of you? Um, who wants to speak? Uh, Lee, Javier? Uh, just jump in. I mean, okay, fine. I'll, I'll assign, okay? Uh, Lee, would you like to tell us? <laughs> yes, Lee, come. Sure. Tell us what's happening in Singapore. What's happening in Singapore? Yes. Um, I think Singapore's split into two, isn't it? Um, everyone I speak to, they're either um, midnight of the circuit breaker, they were down at a hawker centre trying to get some food just outside for the first time in a few months. And then I know others that still haven't gone out to dinner since, you know, and are just waiting to see. Um, it's been an interesting one because I think there is that divide. I don't think that divide is unique to Singapore. Um, but there seems to be d those very two distinct uh, camps and it almost goes towards, um, I think it goes to family lines and whatever else as well. Like I know plenty of 25 uh, year olds in the office that have, uh, are out every day again now and just going out for dinner or drinks or whatever. And I know plenty of people with families who are like, nope, don't care. I will wait another month and uh, <laughs> see what happens to everyone else first and then I, and then I see. So I think yeah. at the high level, that's the story that, you know, everyone in Singapore can relate to. Um, from a working perspective, again, it's, it's divided. I know businesses that have tried to go straight back to normal. I know others that haven't. Um, us from an Aviva perspective, we've got, what, 1,200 employees in Singapore. I think only like 100 are still in the office and, and everyone else is still working remotely. Um, you know, and then I think about what's happened in that time and it's just been it's a mindset game like that's the one thing that i'm you know from a transformation lens or whatever else i've done in my career i've always said it's about mindset but i think this more than anything really highlights um that you know like i ran 150 per oh, i ran 10 workshops for 150 leaders over june uh, june um and we did all of that digitally for the first time ever, first time Aviva had ever done any uh, any big program digitally. Um, but then we still had some leaders who were adamant they can't do it that way or, or, or so on. And, and again, I think that's true of most organizations uh, and people anywhere in the world. MNC is naturally adopting a little bit lo lo um, easier than local firms because of infrastructure or policies or so on. Um, but I think you know, the, and the story I think of the most when I think about that mindset shift is actually, I even think to my own dad in the UK, right? When I was at university in 2003, crap, that was 17 years ago. Um, <laughs> you suddenly feel your age, right? Okay. <laughs> um, you didn't tell us we won't know. Yes, go on. Right. Um, but um, in 2003, I had my food shopping delivered. I ordered it online and I had it delivered. You know, we're in 2020 now. And my dad still has to go down to, you know, the equivalent of Red Mart or no, NTUC or whatever in, or cold storage in the UK, you know, to buy shopping still. And so there's still a degree of that where some people have adopted in the short term, but not necessarily exhibiting the long term behavior. So I don't think that there's going to be this miraculous shift to everything being online. But the people who have started doing more online aren't going back. So I think it accelerated it, but there is still a degree of people, even in Singapore, who still went to cold storage every week to do their food shopping, even in lockdown, rather than order it online. Um, so it's, you know, that's been really, really interesting. And then from a business lens and a work lens, I'm seeing two things. One is businesses have started to embrace flexibility a little bit more. Um, this entire thing we spoke about last time around well, if people don't, how do we know they're working from home, right? Yes. And people have, and now I've seen a lot of businesses go, ah, they are working from home. 
hold on, could save money. We can save a load of money now. We don't need as many, uh, we don't need as much office space. Office space. I know at least two firms in Singapore that are now redesigning their office because they're like, well, hold on a minute. We, we, these 20% of roles, they never need to come into the office again. So we can save, this is a good thing. And then also on the employee lens, seeing employees, um, I think a lot of employees that were kind of the, the digital natives like me who were like, screw this, we should have been doing this the whole time. We're going to, you know, work in remotely. Um, why do we need offices anyway? But there were a lot of other people who were like, well, I'm not really sure I want to work from home. I believe in work-life balance and I don't, I want to keep those separate. And I think then, Yang is one of them, right? She mentioned right. the last time that she really was quite resentful. She had to do her right. work at home. And, and then yeah. what our own internal research and engagement survey results show is over that time, we've gone from people going, well, we do this for the short term, but it's not ideal. You know, we need to come to work to do our work. Mm. Now I saw results two weeks ago, 20% of our employees are now saying, nope, we, we never want to come back. There's no reason to come back. We're fine to work from home forever. And another 65% who are saying, actually, you know what? No, we, I, I still want to come to the office. I want to hang out with, I want to go for lunches and have that social event. But if I have no meetings that day, okay. I want to have the ability to say, I'm not coming into them. I'm going to work from home. You know, Thank you very much. And there's also that 10% who are like, actually, no, I've got two uh, kids under the age of three. Get me the head out of here. I want to come into the office. I'm coming in today. And yes. people for yes. mental health reasons or, you know, whatever, abusive spouses or that kind of thing who really need to get out of the house and, and need to come to the office because it's a safe space for, for them and their well-being. Okay. Um, and so a little bit around um, moving away from almost a fixed policy or fixed rules to what works best in any given environment and, you know, embracing okay. flexibility yes. at that level across Thank the Thank you system. very much. Yeah. So... Uh, we actually have a question coming in, which is uh, how are companies adjusting to their staff and any of these best practices that you can share? Uh, before that, maybe I can get Javier and Tracy just to share a little bit about what's happening at your place. Then we'll address this question. Um, Javier? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, well, related with, with, with all of this, uh, the situation, I think it depends of in each country. You know? I think each country is completely different and it depends on the of the industry that you have and the, the, the number of multinational big companies or small businesses. In our case, for instance, recently we, we have a, a great, uh, the, the European community join all together, all the, all the presidents and ministers to decide what, what's going to happen no, with the future of the uh, global community. And they decided to, to, to give a lot of money all of the country. And you can imagine more or less the, the percentage of money we are going to receive here in Spain, in Spain is almost the 25% of the amount of money to try to recover the countries. So I think here in Spain, especially, we are very worried about the situation because a, an example, for instance, and in some, some social webs, like for instance, LinkedIn, the hashtag more, more, most, most common view is for instance, unemployment, uh, job seeking, opportunities, professional. So people are very worried about what's going to happen. And, and related with, with our sector, our main sector, for instance, I have some, some a poll, for instance, that uh, uh, was recently done here and the expectations for our economy are, are very, very worried. You know? We are very worried about that. For instance, uh, there is the, the, spec, the, spec, the expectations are, for instance, the, there is going to be a decrease of it, of 26% of people who, has, who go outside to have dinner, to have lunch, for instance, have coffee shops, restaurants, 20, 25% of people uh, don't go to the malls, for instance. Uh, the gyms, for instance, the sector is going to decrease at 14%. The, all the cultural activities is going to decrease at 28%. Uh, all the theaters, cinemas uh, is going to decrease at uh, 23%. So the number of sectors, who is going to be affected by COVID is, is, is very huge. And of, of course, for instance, you can, work, you can work remotely, you can buy online, there is delivery for some companies, but the number of small businesses, especially here in Spain, is very big. Uh, more or less, you can, I can tell you that, for instance, 90, 95% of the companies are a small business, entrepreneurs, a uh, business uh, with uh, less than 10 people in each factory, so we are going to suffer a lot. So the situation, I think, is going to be very complicated. I think that, of course, uh, the big companies, multinationals, 
they can afford it. But in our case, I think this is the, this, the real situation right now, no? that people are thinking about what's going to happen after summer, because summer is, is, is near, uh, we finish August and September. September, many people is thinking, okay, I, I will return to work. Uh, I will be out. I have to find a new job. And this is the, 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 the real situation right now. No? People are, are thinking about what's going to happen. And this uncertainty is very difficult for, for all of us, no? and especially in our country, because the, the crisis situation is very complicated right now, and employ, unemployment also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, but funny, Tracy, and I, Tracy runs her own company, right? So can I know that, I mean, how are you guys adjusting to the staff? I mean, do you have any best practices for this new normal that you're kind of facing? Because you are still kind of in the midst of, in the thick of it, right? You know? Yeah, so um, I think for our company, we, you know, we've been remote for a while and uh, a month or so ago, we decided to let everyone know that we would be remote at least till um, the end of the year so that people could, you know, decide to give up leases or, you know, a lot of our company um, is, I guess, folks who moved to LA to work for the company. And so a lot of them have moved, you know, back you know, to wherever their, their family is so that they don't have to pay rent in LA. And, you know, we, we are, you know, now functioning with people from you know, all the you know, various time zones across the US and it seems to be fine. People's hours are a little bit shifted and, you know, we've, you know, accommodated for, you know, folks who are on East Coast time and, you know, don't want to have late meetings and folks who, you know, need to, to just, you know, have more flexibility to take care of things like going to get groceries on a weekday instead of on the weekend when it's crowded. So I think we've just um, found ways to just have that communication going so that, you know, people are able to feel that their teammates are still around and um, available, but yet, you know, to be able to, to not, you know, not be able to, you know, just look over their shoulder and, you know, see what they're up to and see if they're busy. And, you know, so all these things, I think, are a bit of the social dynamics that we've had to adapt a little bit to, right? Um, how do you, you know, just set up a quick chat with someone to sync up on something that you would otherwise just have, you know, leaned over and, and, and asked them a question. So, so I think we sort of, um, you know, adapted to, to, to those small things early on. And then I think as time has gone on, people have started to feel like there's this aspect of the social um, side of being in the office that, that people are missing. So we've started to think about ways to, to have um, groups of people just get together just for chats, just for a social chat. Right. So in the company, we used to eat lunch together all the time. And now, you know, it's, it's something that people miss. And, you know, we, we have a, a, a lunch hangout for people to just, you know, get together at lunch hour just to, to chat with the colleagues. We've also had small groups of people um, just assigned to just, you know, say hello to each other. Uh, just so that's you know. sign to say hello so like okay yeah. you know john your job is to say hello to lee yeah. javier and miang today yeah so so you know we had okay. people just, just indicate interest in meeting people you know in the company and then they were okay. just randomly assigned to groups of three one time right. and then six another time just just so that people who don't normally work together would still have a chance to say hello to each other in the same way that they would have said hello in the, in the lunchroom for instance and so right. that's just but, I mean, one of the things that we're like trying a... to do to keep some of these bonds alive, right? Otherwise, you just only talk to the set of people that are in your immediate work, um, right. you know, colleagues. No, so but this, this hello, is, is it like a 20 minutes meet, Zoom meeting or something like that? I mean, so like, it's it's just like a hello, right? And so, you know, we just said, you know, these, these folks get together and, you know, the, the folks who are assigned just pick a time together and they, they chat for as long as they want, right? But at least... Okay. You know, they've had a reason to to reach out and say hello, as opposed okay. to you know just okay. never right. meeting each other now because you know we just aren't in the office in the same in, in the same place. All right. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll How about the rest of you? Yeah. Some of this, yeah. You're still experimenting with some of this. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of you, I mean, are you all doing any? Um, because there's a question about team building remotely. You know, um, have you introduced any team building remotely? I think John, you do a fair amount of you know training and work for people. Have you seen anybody do team building? There's a lot more. Well, actually, I'm impressed because we've had a couple of requests for that, and I'm impressed with the resources that are online. So I think more and more people are up to the idea that you can zoom a team building out. Um, and I think even the small thing that Tracy is suggesting, where you just say, "Guys, have a virtual coffee today," and say hi to people who you don't normally say to, 
that's a wonderful way to do team building. It's, it's actually really good foundations for remote work because otherwise, you know, if you've got a company where you've got lots of brilliant and smart people who are spread out all over the place, uh, but you only hang out with your own little section of five people on work tasks, then you really miss out on some of those things that are a little bit like that. You know, why we go off site is so we get a chance to meet people and build those connections. So why not say, you know, have a bit of an impromptu coffee together at home, everybody get your Starbucks mug and drink your tea or coffee and just catch up with people. Um, but I think that's, that's coming back on people's minds. Like there's the, we survived. Uh, I remember 2003 after SARS, the company I worked with did lots of team building and there was like this wave from about August to the end of the year, which was we're live. And we had lots of we're live team buildings. Uh, so I think that's on more and more people's minds. Like let's come together and see each other and connect with each other. Um, there's a question in the Q&A about mental health. And I think that's an important part of that interaction with people as well too. Let's have this chance to reconnect because, um, you know, unless, you know, as, as Lee pointed out, some people need to get out of the home because it's not safe or uh, at least in China, sometimes people need to get away from their parents. Uh, so, you know, there is that element of mental health as well too, that I'm connecting with people. I'm not just in this small bubble. Um, and for some people, that's really essential. So those team buildings, those connections with people, I think more and more companies are going to realize those sort of, whether they're assigned tea breaks or they're, you know, social networking breaks, whatever we want to call them, uh, those small events where once every couple of weeks, we just get together and we have like a, a Zoom version of an escape room, for example, <laughs> where we, yes. we connect and we see, yes. see people. I think those will become more and more important if, as we have more people who are sort of, um, because it's, it's, it's waves of isolation in some cases, right? I mean, once you feel we're free and then a new case shows up, we're back in. Like uh, I see Tracy experiencing in the US, oh, we're, we're, we're open, no, we're not. <laughs> right? So creating <laughs> that is, is a habit I think will be really important. <laughs> no, but I've been, we've been doing, uh, for my company at least, we've been doing a lot of uh, online, um, you know, escape rooms for people. Uh, so mm -hmm. ironically, the theme has been around, um, you know, outbreaks of diseases and so on, because that seems to be the, the top of mind for everybody right now, right? So we've been running those kind of, sort of online team building. But I'm not sure if you guys have you know, experienced similar stuff. I mean, how about Lee? I mean, have you team built anybody yet? <laughs> yeah, oh, so we, 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 we put a weekly 30 minute Zoom thing in where the entire purpose of that is just to play games. Like, um, you know, we, we would do stuff like, um, one week, everyone would send in a baby picture of themselves and you've got to guess which team members, you know, or you, we do the following week is, you know, random facts of each um, employee and try and guess which random fact goes to which member of the team, you know. Um, others was just us just playing silly games that we found online or whatever else. So kind of having that dedicated mm -hmm. minutes once a week to get the team together to do that. Um, and then... You know, we, we've done, uh, as others were outlining, we've had the team lunches, team dinners, uh, drinks and everything via Zoom. Um, do you actually provide them with the dinner and lunch or it's just like, you know, oh, sorry. No, no, guys, no, no. everyone's got their own thing, you know, <laughs> they've all, they've all delivered it or whatever. Oh, so um, you, you deliver them all like dinners and lunches and, and drinks? No, usually them they're doing it themselves, but, you know, just... Uh, <laughs> uh, On that theme, there was a, a group I heard where they ordered for other people in the group. So you wouldn't know who you would get, yeah. but you would sort of plug in their address and yeah. you'd send them what you'd like. And so you're sort of sampling other people's food. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah, so it's a best practice to kind of like implement a budget for it. Because usually when we have meetings in the office, you do cater food, right? Mm -hmm. when there must yeah. be some kind of catering budget. Yeah, no, so, so we, we specifically gave, uh, so the people that still have to be in the office, because obviously, um, we've been deemed an essential service, so we have to have a certain amount of people in the office, even though uh, we were on circuit breaker or lockdown, you know, um, for a while. We gave them a daily food budget to, um, to order in and stuff, so they didn't have to go out to get lunch or whatever else, okay. so they could minimize their contact uh, during the circuit breaker. Um, but yeah, just, just people who stay at home didn't get any food. Uh, that doesn't sound fair to me. Okay, they save money on their commute. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, but, yeah, we we even had um like a CEO doing sessions on Yammer, you know, yeah. and things like that. So they, they, they've, been, they've been bits and pieces. I don't think we're doing. I haven't seen us do anything that I haven't heard anyone else doing. So, but um, you know, they, 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 they've been things in place. 
Thank you. Um, we have this question on uh, from from Suke about mental health. Um, how is mental health like in Miang? Because I was really concerned that people were crying. You know, I mean, like, is mental health a big issue now? You know, especially like I don't think culturally you guys talk a lot about it, right? Yes, you're right. Mental health is not a big issue. Was not a big issue. Is not a big issue. And I actually don't know because. Uh, always the economies come first and mental health comes later. Uh, but I think everybody is not happy with the situation. People were just, uh, we're just a patient. We're just waiting, waiting for recovery. So what I, I mean, it's, it's my conclusion. Technically speaking, everything is possible online. Online shopping, online food delivery, online content consuming, but I don't want to. I, I don't want to do it online. I just want to go out and uh, everybody will feel the same thing. We all want to go out. We, because the government regulation, because of the health authorities regulation, we are just uh, staying at home. We are just uh, waiting, but deep inside, you know, our inst instinct or our wish is waiting to spring, pop right. out. Mm. I mean, Keith was saying that in the future, we'll all have like three rooms, right? One to work in, one to sleep in, and we'll all have a little sort of... Actually, we were discussing this the other day, John, um, that there will from now on be a Zoom corner in all hotel rooms and probably at home as well. But that, I don't know whether this are, that is like best practices, you know, to be frank. I mean, Javier, I think from Spain, um, for those of you who are not familiar with Spain, Spain is a country where everybody hugs and kisses, and you must like see each other in order to count. You know, if you're if you're online, it's not counted as you know friendship and stuff, uh, and you never do business online. But I think that's changing, right, Javier? I mean, do yeah. you find that? Um, I mean, what do you think would help people to thrive in this new normal, where hmm. you know? Yes, well, I think that, as I told you before that. that we have to, to, to avoid this uncertainty that is very difficult because of course, all of us, we have that, that, that question, no? that what's going to happen in the future. No? And I think we have to, to start to, to think about, okay, the, the future is right now, no? what's happening right now. And, and Mayan was, Mayan was, was, was telling us that the, the mental health, I wanted to, to, to talk about it because in my opinion, the mental health people who are suffering more are the older people. My parents, for instance, because our people, our old people, they they spend many time at home. And now that we are we are starting to have outbreaks again, old people are thinking, okay, I don't want to to be at home again. I don't want to lock down again. So in old people, I think is going to be more affected. So young people, maybe not not so much, but old people, okay. yes. How about in the workplace? I mean, do you think that as a leader, you will have to deal with, you know, the yes. mental health or the state yes. of your people? Yeah, especially especially for all people. And and Lee was talking about um, about um, helping some CEOs and developing some skills. And I think for in the future, uh, the managers they should have different skills, especially because when you are when you are training, when you are making team building with your colleagues, uh, the abilities, in my opinion, are completely different than in the real situation. For instance, I, I noticed that with my students. Uh, we, we have to give classes by online and the abilities uh, must be completely different but because one of the questions that I asked to my students was, okay, how are classes? Do you like these classes? Do you prefer online or, 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 or normal classes? And the majority of people say, okay, we prefer normal classes, why? because we, we, we get bored immediately with teachers. And, and that's because I think we have to change our, our way of, of, of leading, our way of training, our way, because it's not the same. It's not the same if you are in a classroom than if you are online, remotely. The, the abilities and the skills must be completely different. And we have to understand that, that it's not the same. We are now talking and, and I think we have to use different abilities Maybe the, the other people have to inter, in, interact, interactivate more, more, they have to talk more. So I think this is very important, no? Of course. Yes, okay. I'm, I'm trying to launch a poll because there's been a very interesting question about uh, whether or not we are more interested in healthcare since it started. But uh, unfortunately, I have a little bit of... Um, okay, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't edit. It's just this, it's just this wah. 
Okay, I'm sorry. The first, first question is yes. Yes, no, uh, you're more interested in healthcare since this thing has started. And uh, there's a very interesting question about, about host, uh, hotels, but I'm going to say this. Besides John, has anybody yet used the hotel room since the start of COVID? Like show of hands. Has anybody else it? Okay, so John, you are the only one which is qualified to answer this question. How is your experience with hotel or business or overnight stays uh, under this new reality? Has there been any, you know, security measures implemented? Because the rest of us haven't even seen a hotel. Like, I haven't seen a hotel in half a year. Well, uh, one, I'm extremely glad, and I'm not plugging Marriott here to get money, but they are giving me two for one nights on my, on my membership. And so I'm like, let's stay longer. So, <laughs> I'm like, this is the year I'm going to break past platinum to titanium. So I'm doing my best to, uh, to, to stay extra. Um, but I actually, it, I, I'm really impressed by all the steps and requirements that go into, into staying in hotels. I, I typed in the group. Um, you have to have a, obviously a mask when you're in the hotel, but as you come in, you have to show documentation that says where you've been, have you been to any place that's a high risk area. Um, you also have to have documentation that we have like um, like a health kit is what it's called in Beijing that says you haven't shown any uh, any symptoms, you've been tracked as being healthy, and you have an additional documentation that you provide for the Public Security Bureau for tracking purposes. So if something were to break out, they'd be able to find you, and or if you were the cause, they'd be able to you know track it back to the hotel. Um, so the tracking side is really quite good. You come in, you get temperature scans as you come into the hotel. Um, and in Beijing, at least, uh, I went for the breakfast buffet yesterday and I had to glove up before I could touch the plates or the utensils. Uh, and you had to have a, a mask as you walked around as well. Wait, that hang area. on. You are still having a buffet for breakfast? This is, this is well, what... yeah. <laughs> That's why I stay in are hotels. Are you to eat? <laughs> but yeah, but you have your, your gloves up for, for going through and you've masked on when you walk around. But you, you, you have nice space at the tables as well, too, right? So... Um, I'm not going to say no to bref breakfast buffet no, bacon. I mean, I mean, like it's, all, it's, it's a pandemic. It's not the end I, of the world. As far as I know, like almost all the buffets locally, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Lee, but uh, has been converted to what they call a sort of like a serve you at your table buffet, right? So you get a menu, hmm. you can order anything you want, order as many times as you want, and then they will serve it to your table. Hmm. So you know, it's do like you a, still go and pick up and take it back? You just have to wear gloves and a mask when you go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. um, you know, I wouldn't I, mind if somebody brought it to my table. I'd be all right with that. How it spreads from person to person just from one hand, but never mind. <laughs> okay, so yeah. that's been happening. Okay, a glove and mask. Well, I, I think part of it is that as people are coming in, they're also already checked. I mean, you've done, have you traveled to a place where you're at high risk? Have you got a health issue? Do we know where you are? So by the time you actually make it to the table, your odds are fairly remote that you're going to have something to spread as well. Uh, so then after that, you've got PPE on top of that. So that's sort of the mindset behind it. Okay. Um, Thank you. Hmm. Um, I think I've just finished launching the poll. And I think two thirds of us are now more interested in healthcare. Um, I think, <laughs> yes, I, those of you who can all show your hands. I mean, I think we are all more, I don't know what the word is. We're all more OCD right now, right? Uh, how many of you have been like compulsively sterilizing your hands and washing your hands after touching everything? You know, so I think we are more interested in healthcare. Do you think that that will cause um, a different workplace? I mean, are employees going to come to, to, you know, the office and demand a certain level of hygiene, of healthcare going forward? Even if it's like insurance. I mean, Lee, do you want to talk about it? Lee's in Aviva, so. Yeah, so I don't necessarily know about mm healthcare standards or so on. I mean, I, I, I'd argue that if we saw anyone uh, spitting on the floor or whatever in their office, we would have had something to say even before this, right? Um, so I don't necessarily know about cleanliness, but I think the way the office will change is the offices are going to be smaller with more collaborative space because you know, the, the, the thing that for as much as we can talk about HR and policies and people and everything else, the true driver of almost any business decision is financial. And the one thing that I'm seeing a lot of business leaders, you know, latch on to now is the realization that they don't need as many desks as they previously required. Therefore, they don't require as much square footage as they previously required. 
And I think that is going to be more of a driver for changing the workplace behavior than just doing things because employees want it because they feel it will be nice. You know, the, the alternative view of that is there's the longer term, that would be the short term game. The longer term game that will play out will be that employees that are forced to go back to the way things were will begin to deselect themselves out of those environments if there isn't a degree of flexibility. But that's not going to happen immediately because there's the overarching economic environment where people are just glad they've got jobs at the moment. Um, so I think those are the two things from my side that I think will change the office more than just general changes in behavior around cleanliness or whatever else. Uh, but that's just my two cents. Thank you very much. Um, the rest of you, we're coming up to three o'clock. So um, anything that you guys want to share, like one last word about what you think can help people to thrive um, in this new normal? Um, Tracy, do you want to start? Um, I think there was an interesting comment about, um, I think, just new social norms. And I think, um, you know, I mean, just getting used to carrying a mask around and, you know, having a mask in your hand when someone rings your doorbell, you know, all those things I think are, are things we adapt to. And hopefully that enables us to, you know, still be able to say hello to our neighbors and, and still, you know, be safe in terms of, you know, keeping our distance while we chat. And, and so I think it, hopefully as, you know, as people get used to the idea of, you know, precautions and you know what you can do you know to, to to keep connections with others while still being safe hopefully that you know allows us to return to a little bit more of a, a normal state where you know we're not just living in isolation and fear but we're able to you know to still connect with friends and and family and 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 still try to be safe at the same time thank you very much um so one last word who wants to go next mia yeah i'm letting the ladies go first mia <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> I just wanted to interact with John Stocking when, when he talked about buffet. Oh my goodness, I've never been to buffet for the last seven months. <laughs> I like, I really like eating. <laughs> I really like eating. But uh, my favorite buffet brands, they turn to um, packed lunch brand. So, and they, they say they will come back after the coronavirus out, um, crisis but i don't know when i don't know when and uh, i also agree with the hubby's opinion that all mental health is a bigger issue with the older people because uh, uh, i think um my mother or people with the 70s and 80s they just don't know zoom online shopping everything online they just go out and see the stores are closed and uh, I can say, mom, you can buy things on online, but she say, I don't know how to manage it. <laughs> so mental health is a big issue for older people. Young people are okay. They will adapt anyway. So generation problem is, uh, is uh, another thing for COVID-19 outbreak. And uh, division is the word, I think. Big companies are, uh, surviving anyway but small businesses are really suffering so generation gap division that's the uh, that's the key word for COVID-19 outbreak I think and I miss I miss good good old days I will I want to go to buffet again <laughs> soon yes uh, Matthias has raised your hand Matthias is there a question do you have a, one last question you want to ask Okay, we'll, we'll let Matthias talk. Matthias. I'd just like to, to mention uh, three things. Uh, first of all, uh, mental health and, uh, and uh, physical health uh, without, or throughout these three months is for me personally, for example, was very important. Okay, so the physical health and, uh, and the mental health to overcome certain situations or situations like this was uh, essential. Okay, I <clears throat> I experienced that I, I could never uh, make such big efforts to to climb up a mountain with uh, with a bicycle from starting 20 minutes now to 
five minutes more or less uh, within a certain time period. So it, it's it's very important for for everybody to get a good health and, and mental health and physical to overcome a situation like this. And it helped certain, certainly a lot of people uh, throughout uh, difficult situations. And then uh, what Javier what Javier was mentioning, um, the small businesses in Spain are very very much suffering and. Um, the third thing, uh, tourism and hotel business, where I'm coming from, is uh, very much affected in Spain, especially with the tourism. 12% um, of the uh, BIP is uh, from for, for, for Spain, very essential. And uh, we, we took a lot of measures there for the hotels, there for the question for the hotels. Yes. But uh, it's, it's very difficult in, in okay. this uh, special situation. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so now, um, who else have we not spoken? Ah, yes, so um, we have, I think all the guys have not spoken, right? <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was messed up. Okay, so Lee, would you like to go first? One last word when whilst we wrap up. Last word, anything specific you want me for my last word? Yes, um, <laughs> we want to know what is the one thing that we need to do to thrive in the new normal. One last thing, like, You've got to honestly, just, honestly, just growth mindset. It's, 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 you know, for me, if I had to do, what, if I had to give you one piece of advice, give anyone one piece of advice, not just this, but for anything, growth mindset. As, as long as you can adapt um, and change and embrace new ideas and be open to new ways of working, everything else becomes secondary and easy. Okay, thank you very much. And now, um, John, would you like to have a last word? I just say, from from the perspective of contributing to social mental health and everything else is um, go out and contribute to those small medium businesses and go have an extra coffee, ask them if they'll give you a buffet, you know, you know, <laughs> say, I'd love to support you. Give me a buffet. Um, but I mean, spend a little bit of time with those people because those are the people I think it sounds like everywhere that, that's who's struggling right now. Um, the big people will be okay. and not going to, their world won't end without us, but the smaller companies, those people probably need our help. They have the most stress, um, those are the people who probably have, have the most to lose if we're not reaching out. And, and I think uh, depending on where you are in the world, right, reaching out may or may not be possible. But uh, for a lot of us, we're more able to, to connect, wear our masks, go out, shop there, wear our mask, go out and have a coffee there. Um, and I think those will be things that will make a big difference. Thank you very much. And of course, uh, from our professor, the last of the last words. <laughs> <laughs> Javier, come. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, I will say solidarity. I think this is this is very important that uh, people help each other, and especially as we were talking before with the other people. And solidarity for me will be the the, the key word. And I hope that uh, in a few months we we were able to join again and to to talk about because we 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 get the vaccine and we we have the 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 solution for this situation. And all of us we are coming back to the new normal. So thank you very much. Thank you for joining us, um, for joining us, for all the attendees. And thank you to my five wonderful panelists uh, for giving me their time, especially Miyang, who's like not well even. Thank you so much. Um, I will send the recording out to all of you guys at the end of it. There's also kind of like a survey of how it went. Um, and I hope to see you guys at the next one, next month. All right, so see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>